while she's sleeping, she has a very, very vivid dream. And she's standing in this exotic garden that's beautiful. And she almost immediately understands that this is not this world. This is not a garden in this world. She realizes that she's having a dream of her being in the next world. And someone approaches her and says, Jewish, Jewish. Hi everybody, it's Arya Finger. Welcome back to the Jewish and Joyful Podcast. This week's episode is with Rabbi Shua Zitron. Rabbi Zitron is going to share an incredible and a powerful story on how to get through these challenging times. We'll talk about Arla Mishnabura, the revolutionary project that changed my life. I'm sure it changed your life as well. And Parsha Knowledge Weekly Torah Publication. Keep up Parsha Knowledge Gmail.com to receive Torah Thought Stories and Inspiration of the Weekly Parsha. And now to this week's episode with Rabbi Yeshua Zitron. It is a great honor to be here with the Jewish and Joyful podcast. Being joyful, being happy is a imperative part of Judaism, of Yiddishkeit. And, you know, you could say that nowadays it's more difficult, which is true, because we are uh, dealing with a difficult test, a different, difficult assignment. But the truth of the matter is, is that for everyone at one point or another in their life, they go through a difficult time and they uh, have a difficulty in being uh, joyous and joyful. We have to step back and understand that being happy, being joyful is not just a bonus. It's not just something extra, but it's something imperative. It's something that's fundamental to our Yiddish guide. It's something fundamental to our service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it's something that will increase everything positive in our life. It will increase our productivity. It, like Not being joyful does not gain anything and being joyful gains everything. So I'd like to share with you a story that there was once a, a amazing a young man, you know, like smart, intelligent, you know, learned well, and he was set up with this amazing young woman, also smart, intelligent, from a good family, and they hit it off, and uh, the 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 shidduch was approved from all angles, and from the couple themselves, and they got married, and uh, they were blessed with so much happiness, so much abundance, so much you know, children from all angles. He went into business. He became extremely successful, and he spent his time doing a chesed, you know, learning, like like literally, like one of those couples that when you look at them, they're like the A couple, like everything, like she is, you know, like does everything amazing, he does everything amazing, like everything they did, they did was perfect. Unfortunately, one day, a drunk soldier uh, came into town, and their little uh, three-year-old son was playing, and this drunken soldier, soldier, you know, you know, saw him, and grabbed him, kidnapped him, and ended up, unfortunately, abusing, mutilating, and murdering this three-year-old boy of this amazing couple. You know, the Leviah was tragic. People came from all over the place. This was like the most amazing couple. Like, how could this happen? How could this happen to this three-year-old kid? And, uh, you know, after the couple was slowly trying to, to, to come out of the darkness, there was another tragedy. And that was that the husband was, the father was, was hit with a very, very difficult sickness. And within a very, very short time, he uh, returned his soul to his maker at a young age of 35. And the, the, you know, the town like took this very hard. Like, how could this be? Like, first the young kid, and then shortly afterwards, the father, like, everything was, was was, was, was this was the perfect couple and you know the the wife took this very hard besides the death of her of her son and the death of her husband she she couldn't get out of it she was stuck in a rut forget about happiness she was just like done she was done with life and years passed and she was still stuck in the same rut she couldn't get out of it and finally one of her her, her older elder children went over to her and says you know mother how, how long are you going to be Dad, how long are you going to be dead, down? You know, your father would not want you to be this way. He would want you to be happy again. And he, they said, you know, that also the child, this neshama, wants you to be happy again. This is not beneficial for anyone. And the, the, the son goes and says, you know, the matchmakers, the Shatchanim, they were chasing after you for so long. Like, start listening to them. You know, you have to rebuild your life. You have to continue with it. And the son, like, you know, spoke to the mother. And, you know, after the son left, the mother started thinking, says, you know, like, what does it help? What does it help the sadness? What does it help the difficulties that I bring upon myself? What does it help these negative thoughts that I'm constantly thinking about it? And she made a firm commitment, a firm Kabbalah. She says she's, she's going to overcome her sorrow. 
she's going to go and she's going to try to go with 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 emuna and with happiness she says listen i always trusted with hashem why shouldn't i be happy now and for the first time in many many years she slept soundly she slept she slept peacefully and while she's sleeping she has a very very vivid dream and she's standing in this exotic garden that's beautiful and she she almost immediately understands that this is not this world this is not a garden in this world she realized that she's having a dream of her being in the next world and someone approaches her and says do you want to see your husband and she's like taking it back she says, uh, you know of course i would love to see my husband and they bring her into this room that's filled with thousands of elderly righteous gentlemen and who is giving a sheer for everyone and that is none other than her husband and the husband sees her he goes over to her and she she's shocked at him she says like you know my dear husband is like first of all why did you leave me alone at such an early stage in our life and second of all she's looking around the room she says how did you become the teacher of so many righteous people so many tzaddikim he says you know like while well, you learned but you were never a Talmud Chacham you were never a Torah scholar you, you were a merchant and you you know learned on the side so her husband responded he said you know in my former life I was a very very big scholar I was a very big Talmud Chacham but I never got married and when I left that world I was told that I can't assume my place in heaven because I never fulfilled the commandment of the Torah of getting married, of being fruitful and multiply, pruru. So I was put in this world again. I was brought in a Gilgal and a reincarnation again. And the purpose was of marrying and having children. And that's exactly what I did. And once I completed my ticket, I no longer have to remain down here. And that's why I was taken away at such a young age. So the wife goes and says, what about my, 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 my baby, my son, my three-year-old son? Why did our son have to die at such a young age? So the husband responded, the husband replied, he says, you know, that he has a very, very high soul, high neshama. And he was a very, very big tzaddik, but as in his previous life, he was kidnapped at birth and he was raised on the milk of a non-Jewish woman. And until the age of three, he was raised by a non-Jewish woman. And then at the age of three, he was he was redeemed by the Jewish community. And then he later became a big tamachacham, a big leader of the Jewish nation. But because for the first three years of his life, he was raised in a non-Jewish environment. He drank milk from a non-Jewish woman. He had to go and come back as a, as a Gilgal. For, and the ticket was to go in a Jewish family, live, be raised in a Jewish family, be nursed from a Jewish woman. And then once the three years are up, then his ticket is complete and he gets returned to, uh, to Shemaim. And, she's, and he goes and says, and you, you, me and you, we were, both, we were both that vessel. We had that opportunity to be able to raise up such a tremendous, tremendous spiritual soul and then she responded says okay so if he had to die why did he have to die in such a horrible death did he have to die so by this mutilated and abused by this drunken soldier so the husband responded that his death was destined in any case but in the Bezin Shalmaila, in the heavenly court, they had decreed that because of the amount of sins in our town, there was supposed to be a very, very evil and bad decree in our town, that all its inhabitants will be destroyed in a catastrophic pogrom. And the righteous soul of our three-year-old little boy volunteered to die a terrible death as an atonement, as a kapara, for the entire town that they should be spared. And that's what happened. And then he goes on and he says, you know, you should know that when you get up to heaven, he is in such a high place, our little son, that nobody can reach to that level. Only me and you because we raised him. And then the husband goes on and, and concludes the dream. And he says, you should know that only by the schus of your imuna, of your simcha sachayim, was I being able to be revealed to you. And he goes on, he says, you should know that as long as you are in this cloud of darkness, this cloud of sadness, you almost lost another child. And then he goes on and says, the, 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 the dream finishes that you should go on and, and you know you have much more to do and go and get, get remarried. And shortly after that, the widow awoke and she felt like a new. But we see over here a very important lesson.
That this person had every reason to be sad, every reason to be down, every reason to have a lack of joy, a lack of simcha. But her husband did not appear to her in her dream. Did not she did not get until she let go of that sadness. She let go of that darkness, and she brought in this 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 joyfulness, this emuna, this level of simcha that she hasn't experienced in so long. And that's all of a sudden when she was able to have the clarity. And that is the reason that her husband was given the opportunity to be able to reveal himself in for her in her in her dream. So we have to realize how important Simcha is, how important Emuna is, because they work hand in hand. You want to be happy, you have to work on your Emuna. You have to realize that everything is from Shemaim, everything is from heaven. We're living during very, very difficult times, dark times for our nation, for the Jewish nation. And very difficult times for many people personally. And it's easy to be down, it's easy to be in a lack of joy. But if we stop for a second and we realize that everything is from God, everything is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then we will allow ourselves the opportunity to be happy, to realize that there is a reason, there is a purpose for everything. And if there is a purpose for everything, then we realize that, okay, wait, there's, maybe there's a side, there's a bright side to this. And the more joy, the more happiness, the more simcha that we have, the more bracha that we will bring to ourselves. So the bracha that I want to give to each and every single one of us is that may we stop for a second and realize the source, the origin of it all. And that is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And when we realize that everything is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that everything is based off Emuna and everything is based off Bitachan, then we would have the bracha of Simcha, the bracha of happiness. And once we are able to achieve that happiness, we will be blessed with so many, many brachas. Our Ayla Mishnabura is an incredible project that is changing the world. They have a clear and incredible explanation and elucidation of the Shulchan Aruch Mishnabura. Please visit our website, r or you could get one at your local bookstore. And to receive Torah thoughts, stories, and inspiration on the weekly Parsha, please email parshanology.com or you can visit parshanology.com.